Hello everyone, uh, this is Steve with Aptera Owners Club. In this video, we're going to talk about some uh, some study that was done by the Anderson Economic Group. There are a couple of um, tape articles in the popular press regarding this study. It says, you know, studies show that electric cars cost more to fill up than gas, or electric vehicles more expensive to fuel than gas-powered cars at the end of 22, according to consulting firm. And if you look at this, they basically tell you that there's this Anderson Economic Group. They've had this, they did this study and they found out that it was more expensive to fuel an EV than a gas powered car. And so I was like, hmm, that doesn't pass the sniff test, but I don't want to discount them unless I actually look at the methodology. When you see any study and you want to know if it's a good study or not, people are usually not just outright lying. They usually have something about the way they're doing the methodology that makes um, the results different than um, another study. So if you have two studies that say contradictory things, look at the methodology. Okay, so here we are. I was able to track down the full text of the study. It's 77 pages long. And uh, this is from April 6, 2022. But when you look at this is their Anderson um, Economic Group, this is their website. January 24th, uh, they're showing uh, this data that shows that here is the gas-powered car, and then it was it was you know according to them it was cheaper here, and then it was more expensive, and now it's a little bit cheaper right here. And when you see what the full if you click this full report, it sends you to here. And so they're saying that the methodology is the same. So let's look at this methodology. Let's scroll through it, get to the good stuff. All right, let's see here. All right, so they are saying they're going to look at the cost of the underlying energy. That's the most basic thing that they look at. Excise taxes, charges for road use, cost of the pump or charger, the cost of driving to and from the fueling station known as deadhead miles. Okay, so this is what they're saying. When you have EVs, you get the energy cost of the electricity. Then you have the excise taxes for roads. So some states do charge EVs um, some extra registration taxes. That is to offset the road taxes. Road taxes are built in. They're bundled into the price of the gasoline or the diesel. So that's true. And then the cost of the charger. So you, you know, the chargers do cost something. And so um, when you charge a gas-powered vehicle, you know, the, the pumps, the gas station has paid for them and so they're rolled into the price of the gas so you don't have to pay anything extra so they're saying they're going to break this out so that makes sense um and then there's deadhead miles so you have to travel to and from a, a charging station um and typically gas stations are there's like a lot of them and you're not going to have to deviate very far from your regular drive to get to them and so there's that 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 all makes sense so let's let's go through it um and then this is what this is this is kind of the crazy part. They estimate time burdens. So they're saying that they are going to figure out how much money you get paid annually and how much money your time is worth. And the time that you spend charging the car is time you could have made making money. Um, and so they're gonna they're gonna charge that to the EV people and to the ICE people. So obviously, when you fill up a car that's a gas car, you're not spending that much time. It probably takes about 10 minutes to fill up a gas car. So over the course of a month, you're probably spending an hour or less per month at a gas station. So that makes sense. They're saying that with mostly home charging, if you look at their methodology, they're saying mostly home charging means you're gonna spend 25% of your time charging at a commercial charging station and that you are gonna spend, and they're not gonna, they're saying that they're gonna charge you the time to click in and unclick your charger at home, but the interval while it's charging, they're not gonna charge you the time burden. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but they are charging you the time burden for when your car is charged in at a commercial charger. So the commercial charger, it takes you two, three hours to charge your car. They're gonna assume that you could have been working or doing something different, and they're gonna charge you the price of that in your lost wages. Uh, that, I think, is a serious flaw in this study because when people are charging at commercial EV charging stations, it's not like they're sitting there watching their car charge for three hours. They're going to eat or go shopping or like working or doing something else. They're doing, it's not lost time. 
Like the time that you're at a gas station watching the gas go into your tank, that is just lost time. You're just staring at it for five minutes or something while it's, or however many minutes it takes to fill up. Uh, you, that's just lost time. And you driving to that gas station, you know, swiping your card, sticking it, that's just lost time. The time to charge an EV, that is not lost time, but they, this study is saying that it is lost time and they are charging you for it. Okay, that is uh, number big red flag number one. And then the other red flag happens when you look at these graphs. Okay, so we're gonna get to the graph. Sorry for the scrolling here. Hopefully this doesn't make you kind of... Uh... Okay, so here is the um, assumed costs. So they're saying that the average electrical cost is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So I wish I got that. In California, it's much higher than that. And then the average gasoline cost is $3 a gallon. So I wish my gas was that much. It is not. It's way higher than that in California. And then they're saying that commercial chargers are going to charge you about 43 cents. Now, that seems like a little expensive. Um, the commercial chargers, I guess you could find some that are more, but I think they're kind of cherry picking their chargers because uh, most commercial chargers that I've looked at don't charge that much more. I mean, it's more because in California, the the residential price is more, but the gap between residential and commercial is not like, this is like triple, almost triple. I would say that the commercial charge uh, uh, premium in California is maybe about 50%. So it's about 50% more, uh, 25 to 50% more. So anyway, that is another, that's another suspect uh, um, finding that they have in their study. All right. So then they make like, like this is the energy prices, but you'll see in their, uh, okay, so this is the important thing right here. Um, oh yeah, this is the time burden. This, this is what's crazy. So they're saying that uh, this is the mid price ga uh, gas. And I don't even know what they're talking about with home refueling. No one home refuels their, uh, their gasoline car. Like, do you, like, it's not like a lawnmower. You don't get a gas tank from your garage and like fill up your car. That's not a thing that people do. I mean, maybe you've done that once in your life or something when you're standing on the road, but everyone pumps their car at a commercial, at a gas station. They don't home refuel their cars. Okay. And then mid-priced EV, mostly home. So th this is another big uh, assumption they make. They make the assumption that there's 25% of your, your time is going to be done in a commercial charger. Now, I, I know that's different for everyone. Me personally, I almost never use a commercial charger. The only time I use a commercial charger is if there happens to be a free one when I'm when I'm shopping or something. It happens to be at the mall. We're going at the mall. There happens to be a free charger open. Yeah, I'll plug it in. Or there happens to be one at a, near a restaurant I'm going to. Yeah, I'll plug it in. Um, and it's not that expensive. So I'm, I'm very rarely like going out of my way looking for a commercial charger to plug into so I can pay money to charge at it. It just, if it's convenient, I'll do it. If it's not convenient, I don't do it. And so this time burden of um, commercial charging for my use case is essentially zero. And then this is the funny thing is they're saying home refueling is gonna take almost uh, 45 minutes a month. That is insane. Um, Plugging in a car takes literally two, three seconds, five seconds, maybe. Let's say five seconds. And the unplugging a car, five seconds. It's like 10 seconds a day. Um, that is 300 seconds per month. Uh, that, that, that's like, what is that? 300 seconds per month. A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes at most. And then you don't have the, uh, the driving to any a gas station. It's way more convenient and it takes way less time than uh, than refueling a gas car uh, for sure. So this is very skewed. And then they are uh, assigning these hours that you've quote wasted to um, to how much money you would have made in that time period. All right. So this is this is the key thing right here. So let's look at this. They are saying with mostly home charging um, that. This blue is the energy cost. Now, remember, they're taking into account that 25% of them at, are at that triple the energy cost. So if you're doing almost all home charging, like most people do, it's probably like down here. So it's probably at 50% of this bar. So it's like probably five bucks. And oh yeah, there was a part up there where they're looking at average fuel efficiency for ICE car. They rated it at like 30. And then the average um, watt hours 
per 100 miles. It was like 3.9, which seemed reasonable. So those, so the, their energy costs seem reasonable assumptions and their fuel efficiency and electric car efficiency seem like reasonable assumptions. The only unreasonable assumptions they have made are so far, they've made some very unreasonable time uh, use assumptions and then assigning a monetary cost to that time is just asinine. And then two, uh, they've made an assumption that the commercial electric charging is tr almost triple the price of home charging, which does not hold water. Um, it's probably like 25 to 50% more expensive than home charging, at least in my area. You guys can let me know if it's different in your area. All right, so that the, the, the other thing is this um, yellow thing right here. This is cost of chargers. So if you look at this, this yellow bar is about a third of this bar. So I would say about $3.33, okay? So about a third of this bar. They're assuming that this is the price for 100 miles. And in their uh, study, they're assuming 12,000 miles, okay? And they said they, amort they amortize the cost of the charger over five years. So they are saying um, $3.33 for every 100 miles and you go 1200 miles so you multiply that by 120 and that gives you 400 dollars um and then you amortize that they're saying it's amortized over five years times five so that's two thousand dollars so they're assuming that you're buying a two thousand dollar charger to do home charging uh, that makes no sense uh who's very few people are going to be buying a $2,000 charger. Maybe if you buy that special thing that Ford sells with their Ford F-150 that does all that special stuff and like vehicle to home and stuff like that, maybe that's $2,000. Maybe that's a little more than $2,000 actually. But a level two EVSE um, is like under $200. I think I paid $150 for mine and, um, and it's been going strong for over 10 years. So you can amortize it for probably over 10, 15 years. And so that essentially makes this yellow bar disappear to nothing, to like 33 cents or like 15 cents. And so, um, and then there are road taxes. So it depends on where you live in the country, whether you get extra road taxes. California has essentially none, so it's very little. So, you know, the, this, this cost should be $5. And then that's not even taking into consideration the cost uh, that they're asking um, to take into account. Uh, the time lost for charging. So this, the yeah. So here it is. This is the part where they give the uh, the fuel economy. So they're saying that the mid price uh, gas car is 32 miles per gallon, and the mid price EV gets 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Which these are reasonable assumptions. So I'm not gonna. Those are fine. I have no problem with that. And let's see. So this sorry, this long paper about 80 pages. And I'll, I'll give you a link to this uh, in the description. Uh, this is talking about tasks required to fuel. Um, oops, it's glitching here a little bit. Okay, here we go. So this is the typical time burdens and implicit time cost for drivers in U.S. metropolitan areas. So they're saying that the time cost for someone who, uh, who has an hourly wage of $33 per hour, just like a reasonable hourly wage, I think, um, for the, for, a, for a combustion, internal combustion vehicle, it's going to be $33 or less because they're going to spend less than an hour. So it makes sense. Um, they're saying that it's $100 for mostly commercial charging of uh, EV, um, mostly home charging of a luxury EV, $102 and, or $400. So these are the costs that are assigning on top of this uh, to the EVs, which again is crazy. In terms of time lost, I would say EVs are way more efficient in time use. The, plugging in a car and unplugging a car in your garage uh, is essentially takes no time. It's less time than like, it's about the same time amount of time you spend opening and closing the door to get in and out of your car. Um, and then com when you're doing commercial charging, no one is standing there for hours staring at the charger as it fills up your car. They are doing other things. They're, they're eating, eating their meal, they're shopping, they're, they're, doing, they're working, they're doing something else. So that is, that is not time that you should um, put as a time burden on these people. Okay, so that is the, ex and even with the, all those flawed assumptions, it's very, very close. It's very, very close. You know, it's about $11, $11. Now, if you get rid of that, 
I mean, it's this the the price of charging is about a third. So he, let, let's recapitulate. What are the problems with this study? One, their time burden is completely uh, crazy. Two, they are assuming you're buying a $2,000 home charger every five years. And three, they're assuming that you do 25% of your charging at a commercial charging station that charges three times the energy rate of home charging. So if you get rid of those three flaws, then this essentially goes down to about a third of the price. And so it'll be like $3 to $10. And so it is crazy that these people, um, you know, they, they look at this study, they don't like critically analyze the methodology and they just kind of repeat what they're saying and say, oh yeah, ICE drivers are paying $11.29 and that's uh, 31 cents less than what EV, EV drivers are, ch are charging. Not understanding that their methodology makes you take into this time, they charge you for the time that you're spending at commercial chargers, and they are assuming you're buying a $2,000 charger every five years, and they're assuming that um, you're using 25% of your charging at commercial chargers that charge you three times the price for electricity, which those are all flawed assumptions. And if you get rid of those, the, the price difference is uh, actually huge and it's hugely in favor of EVs. Okay, well, um, hopefully that is, uh, maybe you guys have seen these, this uh, study touted in, the, in various um, popular press channels, and now you, hopefully you understand how that study was done and what the flaws in it were. Okay, well, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, as always, to our supporting members, and have a great day.